Now this is embarrassing. Welcome to Ride This Motherfucking 2. I am your host with the most, Jordan Driver, here with my two favorite gay people outside of Slater. What's up, y'all? number one, boo. No, Slater is definitely not number one. I am your number one in your life. Who is the last gay man you saw? Me, right? Yeah? Uh-huh? Uh, I actually think it was Darius. No, Darius is straight. Well, he sucked my dick in a bathroom, so he's got some explaining to do. Uh-oh, poor Darius is out now. Oh, man. Anyway, I'm Valentine, um, your second host of the Ride This Two podcast. The number two, the right-hand man to the Jordan, because who's the one who who uh, jacks him off with his right hand? That's me! And I'm over here with my left hand. I am the third in the threesome, Delaney. The third in the threesome. You're the, you're the middle to our Oreo. <laughs> Oh, the cream filling's the best. The cream filling. Yeah, I have to be on the bottom because last time I was on top, two skinny bitches died. <laughs> Valentine just got so excited. His eyes just opened up so wide. Like There's a nice little twinkle asshole. in my eye that time. That's better than the cum that was in your eye. So can we talk about that for a second? Before before we get on to roller coaster stuff, let's talk about cum in your eye. So that happened to me once. And just once? Um it 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 hurt. And my eye was all red and shit. And so I was like, Hey, um, you came in my eye, so you need to go get me eye drops. So I had him drive me to the grocery store to get me eye drops and then put them in my eye because I can't do my own eye drops. I'm not like one of those people that wears contacts and can like touch their own eyes and stuff. And so he put the eye drops in for me. And we've been together since. Aww. That's so sweet. I didn't know that he came in your eye recently. Uh-huh. No, that was like four years ago. But <laughs> Then what the fuck is wrong with your eye? <laughs> oh, no, it's better now. It just hurt in the moment. Oh, so you just look like that. So you're telling me that you've been with him for how many years and he still he hasn't come on your face since? Oh, no, he's come on my face, just not in my eye. Ah, uh, so you, you wear goggles. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, but that would be kind of kinky, don't you think? <laughs> um, maybe? Not that I'm saying anything from experience. Uh, I've watched worse. Oh, you know what Valentine's doing where he has to wear goggles for safety. Um, uh, no, I mean, like... I do have a uh, hot, an indoor hot tub in my apartment and a nice new pool, so requires never goggles. Getting in either of those, the cum to water ratio is like three to six. It's just like, <laughs> and then there's like one little percent of piss. <laughs> no, there like... is a, the thing is, is there's a video camera that watches over my hot tub, so I'm a little too afraid to do anything because yes, I have thought about it. Uh, you get crafty. I'm but sure no. you would be into the film thing. Mm. One night in Valentine. If anyone <laughs> wants to add me on Snapchat, they can find out if I'm into the film thing or not. I just I after Kylie abandoned Snapchat, that was when I was out. <laughs> Cuz I'm like that bitch knows what's up. And also I'm engaged in, you know, Snapchats for sending, you know, sexting and shit. So it's for sending dick pics no to your idea. lover. That's a valid point. And you know what? Now the person who I would share that with is just upstairs. Ryan, are you on Snapchat? Um, so I have a Snapchat, but I haven't like gotten consumed by it. But um, maybe it's time. Now that I know that Valentine sends out dick pics, maybe I gotta yeah. log back in. You're within spitting distance of me, so why would I send you a dick pic when you could just take your own? Yeah. And also, he oh, swallows. That sounds like an invite. As long as nothing ends up in my eye, I'm cool. <laughs> sounds like a plan. So I'm free next weekend. I'm free every weekend. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure you all will thank each other for a wonderful time of cum and anal fun. But speaking of thanks and anal fun we had a lot of well wishers and a lot of fucktards who uh were not wishing us well who were being mean and i'm gonna beat your ass andrew i am not poo you are poo 
I, I mean, bless his little heart. He he doesn't I know any better. I have fought children before. <laughs> I can't wait till he gets old enough to actually listen to our show. But no, seriously though, guys, thank you so much for sending the audio. I am a fucking. I I don't know how I even got this lucky to even ha- be hosting a show that people actually listen to. Which the only reason why you all listen is because you subscribe to Ride This One, not us. But um, everyone who sent an audio, I just got to be honest with you guys. I've been listening to you, most of you for years on end, and you guys are kind of someone who I've been looking up to for a while. So the fact that you even said my name, I was literally coming the entire time. So thank you so much for giving me the best orgasm of my life. Um, I was driving in my car and immediately just creamed my jeans. And I was on my way to work, so it was not very comfortable. But thank you. It was great. We had a great time. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, I didn't know that was coming slater just told us to be sure to listen because he had a little surprise for us at the beginning of the episode um and to get all those uh messages was pretty sweet so thank you guys except you little it Andrew. Was, it was very nice because usually when slater says i've got a little surprise for you it's his cock yep and then you have to get tested after and there's like the whole window period and that's just so much work emphasis on the word little <laughs> Oh, but Slater, also we, Slater, thank you so much. You. Thank you for so much for sending for putting all that together. We know that was a little bit of work getting everyone uh, coordinated and stuff. So thank you so much. And also Slater, thank you so much for giving us a longer episode. Because Yeah, thank you for not knowing how to use a computer and putting together the last episode. So now we get more time. So fuck you, um Bob the Lobster, Rob the Lobster, whatever the lobster's name is. I don't fucking know, but thank you so much for um, losing your audio because it means that you all get to listen to us even longer. Even though you, I'm sure you definitely wanted that, you're getting it anyway. So, fuck you. Thank you so much. Just like Sex and 13 Reasons, this is happening whether you want it or not, so get ready. Spoiler alert, I haven't even seen 13 Reasons Why yet. Oh, you know it's about rape and suicide. It's a teen show. Actually... Drake got shot in the back in Degrassi. <laughs> can we all talk if about that? If that could happen that... to Drake, <laughs> what's going to happen in 13 Reasons? I, You know, people always forget that Drake was in Degrassi, and now he's a famous rap star. But I would be Drake's kid if anyone wanted to uh, give me some money. I would be anyone's kid. I will definitely be your sugar baby. Yeah. Be more than happy to. It's funny. So speaking of sugar babies and Valentine's, so I was at Disney Gay Days a couple weeks ago, and I saw this tall, super skinny, younger guy with a much older man, and it was clearly a sugar baby, which if that's your thing, I'm not judging. Um, But I was like, oh my God, is that Valentine? Then I looked closer and it wasn't, but it really could have been. He looked very similar to Valentine. You sent me that picture of him and I actually know him. I have him on my Instagram and he... I thought you were kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I I actually know who he is. Like, that's a real thing. Oh my God. Have you sucked his dick? No, I have not. I've never met him in person, um, ever. I just follow him on uh, social media. Oh my god, what is but this? But no, name? here I was being like this well, super creeper, like trying to get a picture of him, like without him noticing, just to send to Valentine and be like, oh my god, this guy looks like you. Oh Well while you're looking for him, I actually have a fun story about a um an older I'm assuming gay. Oh I found him. Maybe I found not. him. Oh go ahead, go ahead. Real his quick. name is uh Matthew Powell, and I'm only saying this because his profile is open, so Anyone can technically find him. If you want to follow him on yeah. Instagram, it's McDonald's Matthew on Instagram. That's who it is. And um, it's really funny because, like, whenever I was giving RIP tours last year, I was literally coming out of a, a haunted house with my entire tour group, mind you. And he's, like, waiting in one of the queue lines, and he's completely fucking belligerently drunk. And um, he's like, oh, my God, I know you. We follow each other on social media. Ah! we should go to a theme park together ah! and i was like um yeah so that was a thing and no i actually don't know you but okay that's fine but yeah uh matthew powell if you're listening hi oh my you God, have me on instagram is... shoot me a dm that's funny and it looks like he's a theme park core he's got um uh, cedar point steel vengeance um king's dominion um yeah. Well, well. Speaking of uh, whores and uh, 
older gay gentlemen, have I got a story for y'all motherfuckers. I can't wait. Okay, so my next door neighbor is an EMT. That he goes on call yesterday to go pick up a body. They get over to this dude's house, and there's a man bent over his bed, like I assume you two are bent over your beds. Um, Right, right. That's how it works. This gentleman is 400 pounds at minimum, wearing a teal bikini. Same. With a blow-up doll, and he has been dead for seven days. Nice. It's the best way to go out. Yeah. So my neighbor had to scrape him off of the bed because he had become stuck to it. And apparently, he was apparently murdered by his lover. (gasps) I was expecting like heart attack. I was expecting like heart attack while like um, fucking, but oh, he was murdered? In the middle of sex? He was a 60 year old uh, man murdered in the middle of just getting fucked in his ass. What a wow! What a way to go out. I mean, you know what? Um, that's so awesome. Yeah. And somebody was like, "Oh man, that's got to be embarrassing." I'm like, "He's dead. He doesn't fucking know now." That's true. Doesn't matter. He may have wanted to tell people for years that he loves wearing teal bikinis. I would love and to. Now read his everyone obituary. will know. Yeah, I want to know that. I'm sure his obituary but, uh, is great. <laughs> did you speak of obituaries? Did you read the one that um? Went viral that those kids made for their mom. Was she, she actually like? Uh, yeah. Okay. She so like. Um, okay. She like abandoned the family to go be with somebody else, and her kids like made this obituary, and it started out like just a normal one, and by the end it was like, "And this bitch is dead, and no one will miss her." Oh, Bye, mom. Yikes! That's it was harsh. amazing. <laughs> That's so wonderful. I don't remember all of it, but she kind of deserved it. She did yeah. some bad shit. Yeah, yeah. You I know who else deserves everything that's happening to them? Carowinds. <laughs> because Carowinds has caught fire a second time. Like, They're do more we not... flaming than we are. Yeah, oh my god, yeah. There, we have two flaming homos on this episode, and they've had two flaming incidences in, like, the, since the last time we've had an episode. <laughs> Well, to be fair, this happened, you know, outside of the park. It's still happening at Carowinds. I mean, they caught a bumper car on fire, and now they're catching actual cars on fire. Like, 12 of them. 12? I didn't even see that. I didn't even see how many it was. It was 12? Jesus Christ! I think it was 12. (laughs) Oh my god. What the hell? I hope those people got fast lane for the rest of the day. (laughs) Because <laughs> they're, they're not going anywhere. That that seems fair. Get fast lane and trade your car what, for it. See, that's what I, like, in my head, as, like, someone who works, you know, in that type of area, I'm trying to, like, I'm racking my brain thinking of what type of compensation would they be getting from the park? Like, I know your car caught fire, you should have insurance and stuff, but, like, yeah. what is the park going to do for you at that point? I, I really don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> I, I'm guessing you're going to get one of the uh, the big stuffed rainbow turds like I got from the Carowinds meetup last year. Ding. That seems fair. Or I like, don't know what like to do with that thing. Card. It's been hanging up in my home for a year, and I don't know what to do with it. You put it on a shelf, and you, like, like it a trophy shelf. It won't fit on a shelf. Do you know how big this thing is? You give it to me to have sex on top of. That's I've already done that. That's true. That's where I was laid down. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It seemed appropriate. It's the only rainbow thing in Tennessee. Um, that was not true. Whenever I was there last week, hey, you were in Dollywood. That doesn't count. Our lake house is in Tennessee. Okay, but that doesn't count either, because you know, Tennessee has a little border around the lakes, and they're like out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Whoever gets drunk here, alcohol just wipes all everyone's memories. That's how it's supposed to work. Speaking of disasters and parking lots, let's talk about the wonderful, glorious chain that is Six Flags. Yes. So, as they covered mostly on Coaster Fucking Radio, Ding. there were a few fights that occurred at uh, Six Flags. It was uh, Great America, correct? 
Sure. I, I haven't listened to Coaster Radio. Who listens to them? Who is that? I don't know. I listen while I'm mowing. Who are they? Um, It's Mike Collins and someone Slater wants to bang. So two Easy. straight guys. I, I'm and not going all Harris. in on, uh, on them being all the way straight. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll start listening. Mike and EB, I want that D. Anyway, continue. But if you all listen to that, they covered it pretty well. There were a lot of fights, a lot of teenage girls busting out, having a good old hair pulling time. Oh, man. Where can I find this video? YouTube or World Star. Sure everywhere. You know where that shit is. I'm not going to lie. I probably go on like Barstool Sports and Total Frat Move at least once a day on my social media accounts because it's funny as fuck. Oh, yeah. You're not supposed to even know how to spell sports, Valentine. That's that's not how we work. I don't know how to spell sports. <laughs> no, we're Isn't not supposed spelled... to know how to spell sports. S-P-A-R-T-S, sports? Well, if, if we're going to talk about sports, let's talk about the Hawks making a terrible move. Okay, anyway. Trading okay, Luka Donkic. So speaking about Trey like, trading what deals, they speaking done? of trading deals, 21st Century Fox, can we talk about how that bidding war is just changing the entire like game for theme parks and, and shit? Disney and Universal are in a bidding war between 21st Century Fox. Disney put out their first bid. Universal, Com- NBC, Comcast, Universal raised the bid in all cash. Disney raised it even higher with now stocks in cash. I don't think it. I don't see it like ending anytime soon. But I mean, I really, really want NBC, Comcast, Universal to to win the deal. Not because I'm invested in Universal, which I am, but. Um, because if fucking Disney wins that 21st Century Fox deal, that means that they're going to have the rights to two lands at Universal Orlando Resort. Mm. They already own Marvel, and if they get the 21st Century Fox, that means that they're going to they're gonna also have the rights to the Simpsons land. Come on, please. NBC, Comcast, Universal, just put out a bigger dick. I know you have a big dick, because it's fucked me in the ass numerous times already. Please, show them how big your cock is. Get the deal. I need my I need my investment to go up a little bit. You know, the whole, all of this, the reason that the bidding war is so intense and so crazy is it's about the future of media, and that is streaming. Yeah. You want Hello. content. Disney's going to make their Netflix, and they need content. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, their big key piece that I know that they're aiming for is they want you to be able to stream all the Star Wars movies. Yep. And the big issue they have is New Hope is partially owned by Fox because they helped finance it. So right now, they technically could not stream A New Hope. So you get everything but that. It's such a, like, the problem with, like, all these deals is that there's so many contracts and so many hands and everything. Yeah. Um, And I just want NBC Comcast to win. Because, like, we have a bigger dick. But, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Um, Disney's dick is also pretty big because they're fucking all their employees because they can put out a 70 some billion billion B billion with a B a billion dollar bid but yet they can't play, pay their employees a living wage who's bitter not me because I don't work for them haha <laughs> fuck everyone who works there but I'm sorry guys it really does suck that's that's the thing like I I I have an issue with Disney taking advantage of the amount of love that people have for them because of their childhood and because of the smiles you do get to provide to children and people. When you work at Disney and being in that environment, seeing all that, I'm sure is great. But man, they fuck people on their pay. 100% all the time. Yep. And I really, really dislike that shit. I'm a union employee, so I take labor practice and, like, rights of the workers very seriously. And that is one reason I really do not respect Disney as a company. And they have, they're, every single, pretty much every single cast member is is union-based. And if anyone has been following the union disputes um, with Disney, just a really quick rundown. Disney, because of the um, tax breaks... Just, uh, we're, we're about to give every single t- um, employee there a $1,000 bonus. And um, in the process of them announcing the bonus, 
the Disney unions were fighting for a wage increase to about $15 an hour. Well, Disney said, no, you're not getting $15 an hour, but here's 50 cents. Here's 50 cents extra on, the, on, uh, on your paycheck. And the Disney union voted no against it. Well, then all of a sudden this $1,000 bonus came out. And Disney said, hey, union... Um, if you, if your union members want this thousand dollar bonus, guess what? You have to sign the deal for 50 cents. And the problem is the people who work at Disney are, you know, a thousand dollars could really help them on a month's worth of bill. And guess what? None of them got it. Not a single nope. one of the union cast members got their thousand dollar bonus. Nope. But Hey, shout out to my roommate, Dan, who works uh, security at Disney. Um, he's non-union because he knows how fucking stupid the union is, and he got his thousand-dollar bonus. Hey, nice. And after taxes, it's he probably just... enjoyed that forty bucks. <laughs> That's just—it's so disappointing to me that Disney sells themselves as one thing, and it's just they fuck people so hard. I mean, it's—we all know how much money you make. We know you have to put out how much money you're making, and you can't pay people a living wage. Hashtag think a cast member. Yeah, and I think it's kind of crap because I saw um, one person was saying how they can't do it because they have a fiduciary duty to uh, the shareholders, which is complete garbage. Um, Because like when I worked at um, an Apple store making $10 an hour overnight, they were just like, hey, we're not paying these people enough. Let's bump them up to $13 an hour minimum. Yeah. So it can be done. It doesn't matter that it's publicly traded and, you know, their yeah. shareholders. Like, no, that that's nonsense. I work at UPS, and we're a publicly traded company, and we're a unionized company. And you know what? They're still making billions in profit. Mm-hmm. I think our our profits for, like, the first half of this year have been, like, six billion dollars if not more you can still make money and treat people with dignity if you have over 70 billion dollars though in profit that you're willing to spend to buy something yeah you could have been paying your employees a little bit more it's simple as that yeah it's and you know what if you're not gonna pay the people what they fucking deserve then at least spend some of the money that you could give people on rides instead of making them look like Six Flags shit. I.e. Incredicoaster. Looking at you, Incredicoaster. <laughs> if you're not going to pay people enough, then don't shit on this fucking roller coaster. Although, you know what? You already were lazy as fuck and couldn't build Disney City there, so you built California Adventure and then had to invest another billion dollars to make it not a trash hole. Yeah. Which, I mean, normally we don't want to get too far into the Disney stuff because there's like 9,000 other podcasts that talk about Disney, but since California Adventure is along the lines of a Six Flags, I think it's fair game. But... Can we talk about how awful the Incredicoaster is? Like, the Elastigirl in the tunnel is so sad looking. <laughs> so Just stupid. Feel- you can literally see the supports that are holding her up. And, and Oh, man. It's so bad. And then, like, the one of the other tunnels is supposed to be, oh, um, Jack-Jack made fire, and then now um, Violet Parr is protecting a force field, field around you. You can't fucking see that! You cannot see it at all! I no. had no idea it was fire till someone until they literally had to put Disney put out a video explaining to you the scenes on the ride because no one fucking knew what they meant. Not a single goddamn person understood what was happening in that ride. And that whole Pixar pier is a fucking mess. I'll, I'll give it some credit. At night, it does the lighting package on it does look pretty nice. It makes a little bit more sense. But who's gonna be riding it at night? About, what, 10% of your population who are attending that park are going to see it at nighttime? If that. Oh, yeah. man. And the Whatever. lights are so poorly spaced. I don't even want to go there. But you know what has some great lights? The Star Flyer. Because you can see that fucking dick from fucking everywhere. The 450 yes. ta- foot tall giant cock in the middle of Orlando. That... Both me and Ryan got a, a chance to set our asses right on top of. 
Oh, yeah. We did a sit and spin, and it was amazing. A sit and spin on top of the giant cock, which, Ryan, to be completely honest, though, you were a little drunk, so I don't know if your trip report's going to be the most accurate. So I'm going to blame you for that, Valentine, because um, we went to Hollywood Studios, which the backstory on that is Valentine said, let's go to Disney Park. I don't care which one you pick. Just surprise me. So being the nice guy that I am, I picked Hollywood Studios. So you went to the least Disney Park? He went to the the one that has four attractions. (laughs) Yeah, and um, two of them were down uh, for a little while while we were there. But anyway, so we're at Hollywood Studios, and all you can do is drink your sorrows away there. So he um, introduced me to this wonderful bar that has this amazing cocktail called the California Sunset. And the bar is called Baseline Tap House. Is the name of the bar? Yes, I I was not paying attention to it while we were there. <laughs> clearly, and um, what's so funny had... though, Ryan, is when we sat down, you said. I was really afraid you were going to judge me because I picked Hollywood Studios. <laughs> I'm judging the fuck out of you right now. <laughs> Tower of Terror is such a good ride, though. It just happens to be in a shithole park. But anyway, so before we hit the Starfire, we were at the bar at Hollywood Studios, and I had this California Sunset drink, and it was really good, so I had to get, like, two or seven more and so then I was in my happy place, and we went over to the Star Flyer, and it was it was a good ride. What's it, your it wasn't more bad. My, sober experience of it? Yeah. So my my humble opinion about it is that it's I mean it's it's very fast. So it spins it all about sixty miles an hour, and it takes you up and down that you ride that dick in two minutes. You go up and down that in literally two minutes, mm-hmm. and. So it is a very very quick ride. So by the time that you like have gotten scared, you're already at the bottom again. It doesn't really have a good build-up. It just kind of takes you to the top, spins you around, and brings you back down. Which, I mean, for some people, sounds like a fun time, but you kind of it leaves you wanting a little bit more. But we, because we're super nerds, our drunken asses decided to calculate their um, capacity. And they're only running at about 300 people per hour. And Jesus Christ, come on. They had, what, Ryan? They probably had at least six, seven people running that ride. Yeah, they they had a lot of staff. But it with 300 people per hour, come on. Well, that's because of all the fucking drunks. You're right. Hey, I was not that drunk. We just discussed this last week, what happened to a drunk person on a ride that spins. She fell out and died. You two fuckers could have died. We could and have. That would have improved the podcast. We... But it would have been <laughs> sad for didn't. a little bit. I did. You know, they do have a pretty cool-looking bar and stuff. Didn't really take part because we were already fucking trashed. However, really quick negative about that location. The their bathrooms, bathrooms are single-person bathrooms. <laughs> and there's two. And there's, like, a hundred people there. Actually, no, there were more than that because... Oh, we, we waited, waited. We waited for, what, 25 minutes on a Saturday night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, the parking was worse than that, but... Um, the bathrooms were real bad. Single person bathrooms in an attraction that has about a 25 minute wait and about a, at least another two, 300 people just standing around watching the thing run. Plus you have your full bar, which is, has every seat taken on a Saturday night. But yet we have two single person bathrooms. What the hell? Be aware. Oh, look. Never go to it the was- star flyer on a Saturday night. Go in the middle of the day on like a Wednesday. I thought we well, were going to get it, murdered the in the parking garage. And then I got so freaked out because, so I love my car. Um, and uh, my man friend, he parked it real close between two other cars. And I was freaking out because I don't want any, like, dents or dings or anything on it. He was freaking and out because he was fucking trash. Don't let him lie to you. <laughs> I, was I wasn't say, I'm trashed. Sorry. I was just in my happy place and ended up telling Jared... All sorts of stuff he didn't need to know in the car, but it, hey. It was a good conversation, though. Yeah, yeah, it was a good conversation. We've gotten closer because of it. Yes, we're very close now. Our dicks touched. No, they didn't. <laughs> yes, they was. did. I'm sure they did. That's okay. That's, you know, that's like a handshake for you guys. It's fine. Yeah. Jordan, don't lie. Well, Our dicks touched just, uh, like, less than five days after that. 
Absolutely. Yeah, what happened we in Dollywood? We put cinnamon boys. bread between it. Oh man, that cinnamon bread is so good. My that my was fucking delicious. So it was me, Jordan, my boyfriend. Uh, oh, by the way, y'all, I'm taken. So sorry, but me, Jordan, my boyfriend. Um, Can uh, my, I say something real quick? Yeah, Your go boyfriend ahead. has the most beautiful eyes. I was entranced by them. <laughs> Can I can I spoil something for you really quick? What's that? He wears contacts that are colored. God damn it! <laughs> fuck you, Anthony. Hey, mother, you lied to me. I have realized you lied. <laughs> I don't care about you, Ryan. Yeah, he My he eyes wear, are better and they're real. Yeah, he wears colored contacts. Yeah, I'm very upset. His eye is how his can eye I colors, trust the gay community now? His eye color is actually brown. You know what? You know what? I'm I'm done. <laughs> anyway, so it was me, Jordan, Liars. my boyfriend, and then a couple more of my friends, uh, all met up at Dollywood. And my best friend Cody, which who does not listen to the show, <laughs> was begging us for cinnamon bread that entire fucking day. The whole fucking time, I'm there with him. He's like, "We gotta go get cinnamon bread." <laughs> I'm like, "We're gonna get some." <laughs> Literally, I was like, "We're we waiting all till the end. It. It's gotta be the last memory we have in this park." Oh man, because uh, everything else is so terrible. <laughs> okay, let's talk. Let's talk about what is actually terrible, really quick. So, anyone who follows me on Twitter at RTO Valentine knows that <coughs> I have shameless a, plug. No, yeah, shameless plug. Ding. Um, knows that I have a, a theme park um, tattoo of a Millennium Flyer train on a DNA strand, and it is based on Thunderhead because Thunderhead has been my favorite ride. For a very long time. But I rode Thunderhead twice during the trip. And it was probably one time too many. Because I got off of it. And I was the saddest motherfucker who was leaving that park. <laughs> it was breaking my heart, man. That ride is so much shit now. It it wasn't good that day. Now, I had been there the Sunday before. And it was running great. <clears throat> Not like 2005 great. But it was running very good. And, yeah, it was so disappointing while you were there. Two reasons why it's shit now. Um, Anyone who's been following the Dollywood expansion, it is right behind Thunderhead. Thunderhead, okay, Thunderhead used to be a terrain coaster. Like, in the mountains, on the side of a mountain, beautiful. Well, now... The wildest ride in the woods. Yeah, literally, the wildest ride in the wilderness. Um, Looking at you, Big Thunder. Um, But now... It's just sitting on a hill, and there's a butt ton of flatland behind it. Yep. And it has ruined the atmosphere of that coaster 100%. There's no atmosphere on the coaster. And now, and, and because light, Lightning Rod is open and they have no money to spend anywhere else in the park, it is running so rough. It is such a yeah. shit ride now. It is the most jolting, bang, like, head-banging piece of shit ride i have ridden in a long time and it breaks my fucking heart i'm gonna have to get my tattoo covered up yeah it's, they should do some sad. midday maintenance like holiday world has no problem doing <laughs> i mean i like i'm just gonna have to start telling people that my millennium flyer train is based on like white lightning or fucking kentucky rumbler at this rate lightning racer lightning racer all day just tell people that they're uh, or they fucked timbers. up. They were supposed to be Timberliner trains, but we had a whoopsie days. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the most disappointed. Like, it, it can't even yeah. lie. Also, um, Lightning Rod, the first time I rode it, I rode it in the back of the train that day. And uh, it was a great ride. But while I was riding it, I lost my fucking prescription glasses <laughs> out of my goddamn par- pocket. Uh, no I made, loose articles. I made the dumbest mistake because I was like, "Oh, it's not a loose article because it's a closed pocket and it's got a button and it's that that is closed." Nope, that fucking piece of shit stole it right out of my fucking pocket. But thank God for insurance because those glasses were only twelve dollars after my insurance, and I <laughs> ordered a new pair whenever I was waiting to see their um. Uh, one of the shows inside the park. So I already have new, new glasses on its way. Thanks to UPS. <clears throat> but, um, you're welcome. <laughs> but Jordan and I wrote it later on in the day and we wrote it in the oh front this God. time. And Jordan, what happened at the bottom of that, <laughs> that, that first okay. drop? 
So they've got some sort of issue going on. At the bottom of the big drop, it's it's potholing like a motherfucker. Like, it jolts you so hard, I thought I was on Sandblaster. You're so right. And I had a migraine the rest of the day that was one of the worst I've ever had. I just came home, laid on my couch in a ball, and turned the lights off. Because I just... I don't know what the fuck is happening. Because that's the second time... That it's developed to that issue. And Jesus fucking Christ, figure it out. Just it ruins that ride for pro me. Pro tip do not sit in the front, man. That pot like he's not kidding. That pothole oh. literally felt like you were running like your car was going fifty miles an hour and you accidentally ran over a um speed bump. Like that's exactly yeah. that's what it a hundred percent what it feels like. And it was the worst f- like oh man, it was so painful. It was awful. Yeah. Sounds like it's geez. it's not good. It's basically as if they just did not put the right amount of like pull out on the bottom. Like you got to know how to when to pull out, and they just didn't know. They had Ryan in charge of that part. That's why the pull out shitty as fuck. Oops, Ryan, I, that's yeah. your fault. Yup. Uh, you got to learn how to pull out more more often, man. Uh, I'm sorry. Like I know I it's not as. Well, it's not as big of a deal, you know, with your pullout game. That's why mine's strong, because I don't want no kids right now. Uh, <laughs> I may have some little Jordans running around somewhere. I hope I don't. That's why after you're done, you just delete that number and block it. You'll be fine. You've just yeah. delivered too many brown packages. I have. That's what I do. You're so good at it, just, though. I know. I just, you know... You're delivering my package later today with my new glasses. Yes, I am. Oh, Except Valentine, the box you is would... a little bit small, so I can't do the thing I was planning. <laughs> Valentine, you would take that package in the back door if Muscle Daddy was delivering it. <laughs> You've already made that joke once before. <laughs> it wasn't on the show, though, so it doesn't count. <laughs> You're right, though. So <laughs> so what? Um, how long had it been since you'd been to Dollywood? Uh, I went last year about the same time. Okay. And you didn't get to ride Lightning Rod then, or did you? I rode it one time, um, because... So, the uh, story about that one is, I was waiting in line, and I was waiting for the front, and as soon as I was about to be the next train, a fucking VIP tour just sat down in my little spot. So, but the good thing is, is their recovery for that is if they take your seat, they give you, a, like, a, a single attraction pass, so you can come back and ride again. So, we decided we were going to make the loop of the park, and then when we came back, it started to drizzle... And Lightning Rod was shut for the rest of the day, so I didn't get to ride it a second time. I only got to ride it one time that day. But we got to ride it twice this time, and the second time was worse than the first. So a lightning, it lightning, sounds like to me like Lightning Rod is just a uh, one-and-done coaster. Yeah. So what do you think, uh, what's your favorite coaster for that part? Ooh, good question. Um, I, I'm going to have to say Mystery Mine. Not just, because it yeah. is ru- it is a rough ride, but the theming is great. Yeah, it's a fantastic themed ride, and I thought about that question for a long time. Um, like Thunder, yeah, Thunderhead de- definitely holds like a place in my heart. Um, God yeah. rest its soul. But um, as of right now, Mystery Mind's probably my favorite. It's- I gotta say, I I just love me some Whistle Punk Chaser. <laughs> Can I, because can I, I get, can I just go I get to say, take up two rows. <laughs> can I just go ahead and say that I did not ride Whistle Punk Chaser because I don't give a fuck about padding my um, coaster count. I didn't ride it because I'm taller than the ride. <laughs> my For all, anyone who really gives a shit about your coaster count, my coaster count's about 130 right now. Um, because I don't fucking pad anything. My dick is already large enough. Okay, so fuck everyone who pads. Looking at you, legend. Looking at you, Drew the Intern. I don't pad anything. I've never heard of this it's all natural. Uh, whistle punk ch- chaser. Damn, it's very small. It's not as good as the Veggie Tales coaster. Which, fun story. <laughs> Uh, anyone who wants to know what my 100th coaster was, it was the Veggie Tales coaster. <laughs> because Valentine wants to keep God happy. <laughs> yeah, I got it. So, um, I started counting my coasters, like, 
pretty recently. Um, and it was a uh, I went with one of my friends to Dollywood uh, for the first time. This is probably like four years ago. Um, and I was counting my coasters, and I realized. Oh fucking shit! Because that that same trip, we also went to a, like a butt ton of the uh, um, mountain coasters. Mountain coast, that yeah, yeah. The, um, butt butt ton of the mountain coasters and stuff. Well, we did the mountain coasters first, and then we went to Dollywood the next day. So my dumbass was f- fucked up, and be- and because my friends like, oh, let's ride the kitty coaster as a fucking joke. I get on it, and it's my hundredth goddamn coaster. <laughs> so <laughs> my one hundredth coaster. Is the VeggieTales coaster from Dollywood, which, I mean, I guess makes it more fun because it's no longer there. So I got a rare credit, I guess, if you look at it that way. Yeah. And uh, related to that area, if anyone can get me information, what the fuck happened to the Ferris wheel? It's gone from Dollywood. I, I, it I, I, I it just like disappeared. It's because I had sex on it. It's all my fault. It Did you ruin me. that? Yeah. Me and oh, fucker, <laughs> uh, me and Ryan like rode it one day, and I just kind of leaned over to give him a handy. But that r- wheel was spinning a little faster, so as soon as I got to the bottom, he came in my eye. <laughs> and it's just like, well, if we're gonna have this happening, we're just taking it out. It's funny though that you bring up hand jobs, Valentine, because I thought we had a long, meaningful discussion. At the Starflyer, about how hand jobs are just a waste of everyone's time. We did enlighten my memory because I was a little drunk too. No, that that was pretty much the whole conversation. <laughs> so a PSA to the entire world: hand jobs are a waste of time. Use your mouth. And speaking of a waste of time, let's talk about the USA Today Top 10 Coasters. Oh, my oh, God. I love that segue. That segue was amazing. Thank you. It first was of all, before, as the before we get into um, the top 10, let's first talk about who were the experts that USA Today um, decided to vote on these top 10 coasters. Everyone get your shame bells ready. <laughs> Let's save shame. the best for last, guys. Ding. Let's shame. save the best for last. Dang shame. So, oh god, um, these motherfuckers. So, Ryan, do you have this pulled up? I do have it pulled up. Go, go so. ahead and read us the uh, the experts that are uh, that are in charge of this top ten list. Okay, so our experts are Doug Barnes from the Season Past podcast, Austin Carroll from the Fast Pass to the Past, the Theme Park History podcast. That's Monet, too fucking long of a name. I know, it's like a Fuck you, poster. Austin. Monet from the Theme Park Princess, Clint Novak from In the Loop. Clint, we're judging. We see you spinning. I'm judging the, the fuck out of you right now, Clint. I... I'm, I'm not first sure I all, can now go to Central Park Funland. First of all, Clint, how can we? How can you say that you're from In the Loop? You're never on, ever. <laughs> you tell them the truth. Continuing on, John Stevenson from Coaster101.com, which is that one I've actually heard of, and Josh Young from Theme Park University. But best of all, everyone's favorite, Rob Alvey. So Rob Alvey and Clint Novak were some of the fucking voters, and everyone else we don't give a shit about because no one's ever heard of you. But come on, guys, Clint, I had a little bit of respect for you. Gained even more respect whenever you actually sent in a a recording for our podcast. But I fucking hate you now. You and that little spinny hat of yours. Fuck Central Park Funland and fuck that um, new coaster credit you all got. Because if you think that coaster's good, then you obviously don't know anything about coasters! I was going to say, yeah. I I wonder if they counted his vote because CP Funland was not in the top ten. <laughs> so, I'm um, Guys, I, I really not... think we should, uh, we should take another look at this coaster at this place, uh, Central Park Funland. Hey, I can see Rob it is a just... coaster. It, it coasts. Yeah. I can see Rob with stickers that say "ban." He was just putting on everyone else's mouth when they tried to talk. So let's like, let's yeah. start. We'll start with number ten. So number that ten sounds like a good idea. Number ten, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. Okay, 
But my favorite part about this number 10 is that the picture that they have on the website is of Mean Streak before it was converted. Rob is still so salty. They were like, you know, this still vengeance seems right. No! No! Can we not get an updated picture? There's a billion of them on Twitter. Come on, guys. Just go to McDonald's Matthew's Instagram. You can find a picture of him standing in front of it. You have a hard on for him, but hey, did, Mean did Streak was my childhood. You? What Leave the it fuck alone. Is this? Whoever wrote this, guys, this is not a picture of Still Vengeance. It's a picture of Mean Streak. Oh god, you are cursed or nerding hard right now. Number two, yeah. or sorry, no, wow, it, how did number I get nine? Ten to two. Number nine. I'm sorry. Number nine, Apollo's Chariot, Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. That is respectable. I'm okay it, with this. It's, it's fair, yeah. Number I love eight. that ride, but number nine's not bad. Number eight, Outlaw Run. Also respectable. It's a good ride. Okay. Get it. It's not a top ten coaster but, to me. But, but I haven't but, ridden it, so I will again, know after July 28th. Number nine and number eight are still better than Steel Vengeance. Let's keep that in, in our minds right now. Yeah. Number seven, Phoenix, Knobles. Overrated. It works. Number Ish. six, here in Orlando, Mako, SeaWorld. It's it's a B&M hyper. That's okay at best. It would be perfect if it wasn't trimmed. It's just when you hit the trim, you're just like, oh, fuck, this ride's over. They they trim that ride. So, yeah, the, after the trim, there's zero air time for the rest of the time. You're sitting in your seat the entire rest of the way. But still, is that a top top six coaster? No, absolutely not. No. I mean, it has a good, it's really good. The hammerhead it's, turn. It's a good ride, yeah. The hammerhead turn after the first after the first drop, amazing. Yeah. The rest of the ride yeah. does not make it a top ten ride. Number five. If we're talking about like best coasters in Orlando, it wins. A hundred percent. Yeah. You've you well, hit the nail on the head. Number five. Maybe in Florida too. Okay, I'm just gonna keep saying number five. Uh, number five. <laughs> El Toro, Six Flags Great oh, Adventure. That's such a trash coaster. God, anyone who thinks that's a great coaster is dumb yeah. as fuck, Eric. Garbage. Um <laughs> Looking at you, Clint Novak. Oh, maybe that one was Clint's vote. Number four, Goliath, Six Flags Great America. Well, let's clarify because Six Flags doesn't know how to name any other ride other than the word Goliath. This is that RMC Goliath at Great America. Uh, when they That's buy the rights to a name, penis. they use it. And no, when I saw a Goliath on the list, I was like, oh, okay, I guess I kind of sort of get it, whatever. And then I saw it was the really short RMC, and I was like, oh, that's dumb. The RMC that gets you hard and then doesn't finish you. Yup, it just blue balls you to death. Number three, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. Guys, we're putting this above... um, this is Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance. We're putting this above Apollo's Chariot. We're putting this above Outlaw Run. Who, who is voting on this shit? We're, we're putting this above so much that Phantom's Revenge is a very good ride. It is not number three coaster in the U.S. Number two, Twisted Colossus, Six Flags, Magic Mountain. I could live with this being that high. There, If some people love the shit out of this thing, I can understand it. I would love it if it was actually a coaster that dueled every time it launched. Yeah. That's a, that's a big mark against it. Like, the picture, the picture they're using on this is of it dueling, which makes it look insane. Yeah. yeah. But it rarely duels, so how can we even say that? And number one, <laughs> Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. So hey, this it list, been worse. this list does not have fucking Fury on it. No, fucking Fury three two five is not on this list. And uh, Millennium and Forceless is not even on this list. Millennium I see Force why. is so, not on this list. If you scroll down, here's how it was done. So a panel of oh, experts boy. picked the 20 nominees, and then the 10 winners were determined by popular vote. Um, yeah. So actually, well, Bush Gardens Tampa had big signs up all around the park saying vote for us. And I, I kind of felt bad for them that they had to beg people to do that. 
Well, Fury was one of the nominees, so if you couldn't vote for Fury, then you go fuck yourselves. I'm rem- so disappointed in this entire thing. If I remember right, Voyage was one of the nominees, too. I think Voyage is a fucking top ten coaster. Garbage. Oh. but these I think comments, it's good. I like it a lot. The comments at the end of the article are are spot on. Greg says, so the flavor text, I don't know what flavor text is. Maybe it's edible. I don't have one of those computers. The flavor text on Steel Vengeance and Twisted Colossus both say the longest steel hybrid. Get an editor. I love um, Bob who says, LOL, the 18-year-old Superman number one, dot, dot, dot. Good list. <laughs> I mean, shouldn't I-305 be on this shit too? Anything else yeah. other than what's on this list should be on this list. I mean, yeah. there are some good roller coasters on there. Are there? Are but there? I, I think there are. Yeah. I, I think Steel Twisted Vengeance Colossus is. is good. Steel Vengeance is good. Apollo's Chariot is good. Mako is good. I But are I have half to of those rides top ten rides? Is Mako no, a top ten not. ride? Phoenix is not a fucking top ten coaster in the U.S. It is not. Because this has made us mad, let's make everyone else even mad, even more mad at us. What? Yes. Let's let's talk about our top five rides if we were to actually vote on this ourselves. Yeah. That we've been on, we're not going to comment on shit that we've not been on and be like, I'm putting this as my number one. I can't say Still Vengeance is my number one. I've not been on the fucking yeah. thing. So, yeah. unfortunately, our, my obviously my coaster count is not that high, so don't come for me. Unless you want to come for me. But everything that we're listing are things that we our asses have been in seats. And we've yep. actually ridden. Alright? So, number five. Ryan, let's start with you. What's your number five? My number five is Montu at Bush Gardens Trash Fire. Why is that? Because it's fun, never has a line, and I had to pick an inverted roller coaster for diversity. I'm so glad that you're being inclusive. It's what I expect from a gay man. Exactly. I try not to disappoint. Valentine, what's your number five? So my number five also comes from Bush Gardens Trash Panda. Um, it is Kumba at Bush Gardens Tampa. The reason why, don't again, don't come for me because some people have some feelings about this ride. It has all my favorite elements on a coaster. It has interlock, interlocking corkscrews. It has a dive loop. And it has a cobra roll. Three of my favorite elements on a ride. Oh, 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 sorry. Four of my favorite elements because it also has a vertical loop that goes around the um, lift hill. I think that's cool as shit. It's, it's a great underrated ride. It really Four is. of it, my it favorite is. elements are on that ride. And let's be real. Any fucking sit-down B&M looping coaster was modeled after Kumba. And every single time they've been created, they've been trying to be as good as Kumba and they never hit it. Looking never at happened. you, Wildfire. I've yes, I agree with that. I will say though, really quick about Wildfire, amazing view on that coaster. Yeah. I'm looking really forward to that. It's probably easily the best coaster, like the best coaster view I've ever I've ever ridden. So, ten out of ten on the view, but the ride shit. So fuck you, Wildfire, on your <laughs> ride. But <laughs> Kumba kicks your ass. It would still be a top two ride at Dollywood though. Mm, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Slater's right. <laughs> Jordan. What's, Don't let uh, that go to your head, you fuck. <laughs> Jordan, what's your top five ride? My number five is, and the more I've gotten away from it, the more I love it, and the more it's climbed. I fucking love Afterburn at Carowinds. It's... An inverted coaster that a lot of people don't talk about. It's always, you know, Raptor and Montu and Alpengeist and all that. And Afterburn's just kind of off on its own. It's not even the best coaster at its park. But I think it is such an underrated great ride. It really is fantastic. The shitty thing is is, um, Afterburn is my, like, white whale because I, three separate occasions, the one time that I went... It shut down on me all three times I was in the queue line for it. Three times. And it's a B and M and it shut down three times. But I, I mean it's say, also B&M's at Carowinds. Don't break down. But it's also at Carowinds, who has had yeah. two random ass fires in the last like two weeks. <laughs> so 
Um, maybe be careful if you're going there. It broke down on me three times and I never got to ride it. So please, if someone can get me on Afterburn, that'd be great. Um, but I haven't ridden it. But Ugh. to keep with diversity and the fact that we're talking about inverted coasters, my number four also at a Bush Park, Bush Williamsburg's Alpengeist, because I'm basic as fuck. But I have to admit, it's a great ride. Awesome transition between elements. It's got some nice speed on it. Some good um, forces. It's a good ride. Number four. And it's unique, too. It's not your typical B&M vertical loop, turnaround element. Exactly. Uh, you know, zero-G roller, inline twist, and then, um, you know, just... Break, it's, it, it has some it has some terrain to work with, unlike a lot of the parking lot inverted BMs. And AKA, they did it right too. AKA every fucking ride at Cedar Point, you're a parking lot coaster. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, a wicked Twister park. is on the beach. It's still flat land. Well, you know, they could technically, like, dig it out and make, like, trenches and shit in the sand. It would be more exciting True. than flat land. At see, mm-hmm. but, okay, one thing that Bush Gardens Tampa does really well is they actually do that. They build trenches and make their coasters seem like terrain coasters, even though they have flat land. But they do a great job at fucking digging, um, digging around and making berms and all that fucking shit. And their rides are much, 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 much more appreciated because of it. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, yeah. the cost of doing all that makes them shut down the other half of the park. Too shame. True, but... Uh, They're we, not we able to feed the shit. animals because of that. Yeah, but theme parks were for rides, not animals. We have a zoo in Tampa. They can just move them there. But, uh, no, we, we hate on Bush Gardens, Trash Fire, but it really is a nice adjacent park. <laughs> adjacent? Well, Yes. It not, sure not... is a place. Yeah. It's a no, place I, to go. I like being close to it, but I wouldn't drive that far to go there. Oh, right, let's go around. I drove 18 hours to go there, so... Well, you insane. make bad decisions. <laughs> so, Ryan, what's your number four? Millennium Force, which, for context... Get trash trash it's shame. been like 10 years since shame. i've been there. actually no probably shame. 13, shame. 14 years since i've been there shame. So it's shame. been a little while but i enjoyed it shame when shame. i was younger How about i you wrote it Daddy? last What's year your number four uh real quick about millennium force i wrote it yeah. for the first time since 2005 last year and it had been my number one for so long until my new number one and I was like, you know what? I got to compare it. You know, maybe I'm wrong. I've never been more heartbreaking getting off of a roller coaster than I was that because it's just not, it's not great. Can we talk about how you just said heartbreaking instead of heartbroken? Heartbroken. Sorry. Thank um, you, you lovely Tennessee bear, you. Heartbroken. I was going to say, sorry. that's how they do it in Tennessee. That's how we do it in Tennessee. So uh, <sighs> my number three... Since we're well, taking... I didn't get to say my number four. Oh, oh, you didn't. Say God, you four. bitch! That's because oh, nobody sorry. cares. But what I'm is it? Sorry. You are not getting your dolly shirt. Ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, That's you left you your Dollywood shirt at Muscle Daddy's house? No, really quick here? question. No, no, really quick thing. I really want a Dolly Parton T-shirt that's just like Dolly Parton's face on it. And there was a sexy as fuck black one that was black and white, and it had the word Dolly written underneath it in all pink glitter. And I really wanted it, yep. but they didn't have my size. They only had extra they only large had and larger. They had my sizes. <laughs> I was really pissed about it. So I told Jordan, I was like, if you see that shirt in a medium, you're going to buy it. I'm going to Venmo you money for it. And you're going to deliver it in your nice little UPS package with your dick inside to my house. And I told him, this is Dollywood. They don't have mediums. <laughs> it's so, it's so <laughs> cinnamon true. bread. The cinnamon bread has gotten rid of the mediums. But uh, my number four, and once again, it's one where the more time I've had away from it, the more it's grown on me. Um, you know, the voyage is just something special. Uh. It really is. I really think it's great. Um, honestly, for a while after I wrote it, I preferred the legend to it. Okay, but that's fair. The farther I've gotten away, the more I'm kind of like, you know what? The voyage is just special. I okay. Um, I will say I don't like the first half of the voyage. 
after the trim break, when you hit that surprise double down, spoiler alert, and you start hitting those 90-degree 90, 90 degree bank turns, that's my favorite part of the voyage. Yeah. The reason why it's not my top five is because I don't think the first half is exciting. I never have experienced airtime off those first couple hills coming off the first drop. So that's why I don't think it's exciting. So everyone's going to hate me and they're going to shoot tweets at me at RTO Valentine. Tell me how much I'm an, I'm an idiot. But I'm saying it's great after the trip break. There you go. Well, let's hear what you think is better than it. Um. So again, people are going to think I'm trash. <laughs> I like well. I we re- know that we don't have uh, to think that. That's so true. Um, I really love Diamondback. Diamondback's my number three at Kings Island. I was kind of debating on whether or not I wanted, I wanted to go with Diamondback versus Apollo's Chariot, but there is just something that B and M does right, and that is their hyper coasters, and they're all very very good. Um, but Diamondback, it's a great it's a great little ride. It gives you some amazing airtime. Plus, it has the splashdown. It's great. It takes you nice far back in the woods. It's awesome. But I got you. Far back in the woods where it has your way with it. (laughs) Yup. But also in the woods is Apollo's Chariot. That was my number three. So great minds think alike on that. Ryan's kissing Mike Collins' ass right now. I I don't know if they still have it. I don't even know Mike Collins. I don't even know if they still have it. But whenever I rode Apollo's Chariot for the first time, I sat in a row that had G-Force meters in the seat in front of me that I could see when I was riding it. I know this sounds crazy, but it was like, it was a ball. It was like a, it was a, a weighted weight on the end of a spring. And it had a gauge on it that would tell you when the ball was like stretched out on the spring, it would tell you what G force you were at. And then it even had a negative G force section. And it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen whenever I rode that coaster. Mind you, I rode this back in high school. So that was a ways back away. But I don't, is that, can someone tweet me if they still have that G Force meter? It was on one row of the seats. I think it was in row nine or something like that. And it was on like one train. But it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen on a coaster before. You know what else it has? Bird attacks. <laughs> yes. Yep. Looking at you, Fabio. Jordan, what's your number three? My number three, me and you think alike because I'm a big fan of Diamondback. Nice. I really think I really think it's a great ride. I think it works really well for that park. And it's one reason why I'm pushing so hard that I think Dollywood needs a hyper coaster. You know, two things I think Diamondback does right. Number one, if you're sitting in that back seat, you get whipped over every hill. Oh that yeah. Back seat is fantastic. Secondly, I actually really love those extended B&M hyper trains, the ones where you're like yes. two in the front, two on the side. It makes that ride much more unique, and I know it cuts down on the capacity, but like unlike Mako, where everyone's just smushed into a very, very tiny coaster train, that long, drawn-out train really pulls you over those hills when you're sitting in the back row. And no, you still have the same capacity. It, it It's a lot more enjoyable, I think, with those extended trains, with those... Uh, widespread seats plus you get cooler views man when you're sitting on the Absolutely. on the wings and i think the view from on top of diamondback is fantastic i think it's just it's a ride that i really really love and enjoy it's great it, it's really great <clears throat> number two right. uh jordan keep going what's your number two i'm gonna go ahead and make number two yeah okay uh number two for me is maverick why? I fucking love that coaster. I fucking love the intensity. I love all the tight elements. I love that coaster. <sighs> Shame. It's my number two as well. So I God, love Maverick. fuck you both, man. It's okay. fantastic. Ryan, that was not an offer. That was me being condescending. Yes, it was. I I took it as an offer, <laughs> but. But, okay, so here's why I don't like Maverick. It's Because sh- you're wrong. It's short. I don't think it has that much uh, intensity. It's not short. It's painful. It's so small. No, it's not. Okay, whatever. Have, I, you, have you ridden it since they changed the restraints? Uh, no, I have not. Okay, that helps a lot. Okay, well, I, I don't even have Cheetah Hunt in my top five, but I still think Cheetah Hunt's better than Maverick. Well, you're fucking wrong. 
you get i think you you it's really exciting it's more terrain based it has that that section by rhino rally where it's like jumping between the cliffs it's designed okay here's my reason why i like cheetah hunt more than i like maverick maverick is themed to a bucking bronco okay you know how you imitate a bunky bucking bronco you do some tight hills that's it okay cheetah hunt is themed to a cheetah and bush gardens did a fucking great job showing you what a cheetah fucking does they showed you that cheetahs can jump into fucking trees that's your first launch out of the gate your first launch out of the gate is into a fucking tree the cheetah is climbing around in the tree so therefore you do the figure eight and then you jump down from the tree where you hit the same top speed that you just hit you keep going cheetahs have quick bursts of speed cheetah hunt has three launches in it quick bursts of speed cheetahs have the ability to change direction really quickly that's when you hit the rhino rally section and you're jumping back and forth and you make those s bends really really like tight turns it's great the theming is great the speed is great the intensity is great maverick shit done by the way you were saying maverick was short it's 4400 feet long it's the fourth longest coaster at cedar point oh god it's it's just not fun well neither is cheetah hunt and you're a cheetah cunt. Okay, Jordan, have you even ridden Cheetah Hunt? No, because I, don't I want to get robbed. All right, at fuck Bay. you, fuck you. You have no argument now. Yeah. Fuck you. We're done here. Uh, Tampa Bay is yeah. a very classy place. Log off. Ryan, why why is Maverick higher than Cheetah Hunt for you then? Because you have your Cheetah Hunt yeah. is like down the road from you. You can ride. I was all about to say the dude who his home park is trash a bay is fucking saying that maverick's better than that i think it's because so i haven't been to cedar point in a while and um when i was on maverick it was old restraint maverick um but i think because it's been so while so long i'm really drunk now um it's been such a long while (laughs) uh, that it it kind of i don't know made it better in my mind maybe maybe if i went back today and Road Maverick, I'd be like, this sucks. I want no, my No, it's hunt. still so good. All right, Ryan, this is a, this has got to happen. All right, you and I, Jordan, you're invited. We're going to make a trip to Cedar Point. We're going to ride Still Vengeance. We're going to re-ride Maverick. I want to send in a trip report. I'm dead serious. I really want to ride Still Vengeance. So please, if you all want to go, let's do it. Because I need m- people to go with me. Because let's be real, I can't fucking afford a hotel unless I'm splitting it with people. So... <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm down for that, and um, we're going to get rear-ended on Steel Vengeance, right? We're going to get rear-ended in that hotel by Jordan. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what actually that brings us to our number one. <laughs> wait, 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 we didn't, did we get our number two from uh, Valentine? Oh, no, you did I not, no. keeping mm-hmm. check, I'm too drunk. Go on, Valentine. <laughs> so, my number two is Outlaw Run. I've ridden a, quite a handful of RMCs. Hold on, hold on. So you're going to go on about how Dollywood is so much better than Silver Dollar City. But, and your number two coaster is from Silver Dollar City. Yes. And what's, and is better than anything Dollywood has by miles. So, okay, Jordan, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have any, not any roller coaster from Dollywood is in my top five. Yeah. All right, but no, no roller coaster from Dollywood is in my top probably fifteen. Oh now. fuck you! Okay, that's that's pushing it. I, because lightning rod, that it used to be great, but that fucking pothole, I probably won't ride that thing again next time I go. Anyway, so the reason why Outlaw Run is on my number two is Outlaw Run was the last coaster that scared me, and I mean that by. I thought I was going to fucking die on that coaster because I had never ridden a RMC hire. So like, did the people on Sandblaster. <laughs> I, when I rode that coaster, so I drove, <laughs> <laughs> I drove eight hours from Bowling Green, Kentucky to um, that park for a weekend trip. It was like a, it was a turn and burn trip basically because I was going for Ala Run and I had hyped it up in my head. I've seen all the POV videos. It opened like two years prior. It was a little older at that time. But, uh, but in my head, I was thinking, man, this is a wooden roller coaster that goes upside down, like, numerous times. It was a prototype. It was, it's the first topper, tra- topper track style by RMC, 
and you're hitting a double barrel roll, and you're only wearing a lap bar. Um, you're hitting that crazy fucking, like, all those crazy RMC elements right out of the gate. You have that fake first drop that drop, and then the first drop drops into the ravine. Oh my god, I was just so ready for this ride. And I got on that, so I sat in the front row because, of course I waited because I drove eight hours for this shit. Pulled down that lap bar, and the train pulled out, and I was shaking the entire time. Like, scared shitless. Because I'm like, I'm riding a fucking wooden roller coaster that's about to destroy me. And I got off, and I said, Holy shit, that ride kicks so much ass. All sorts of ass. Little ass, big ass, all the ass. By the way, that's a quote from Rob Alvey for the first time that he rode, um... I'll run. I don't know if you all seen that POV video, but I saw it a thousand times. Of course I've not seen that POV. I'm (laughs) banned. Um, But. Wait, you got re-banned after he. No, not yet. Oh, okay. But you will be by the time this drops. Outlaw Run was amazing. And I still think it's amazing. And I have yet to. I honestly, to this day, have yet to ride a ride that scared me more than Outlaw Run. Amazing head choppers. Amazing transitions to elements. Crazy airtime. That double barrel roll to end it was just the jack off. The the that was someone putting was their mouth on my off? dick. No, they weren't jacking the jack me off. off. They were putting their mouth on my dick. That's how good I was, was. going to say. We've we've established that that's a waste of time. So they literally put their mouth on my dick, and I came down their throat when I got off that ride. It was great. Damn, someone's a shooter. Pretty far too. I've hit my headboard a few times. Yeah, our headboards against the neighbor's uh, condo next door, so they know when we're having sex. Cause they, oh, like, that's nice. Because we're right next to their bedroom, so like they'll be like asleep, and they'll hear... <laughs> and they were like, the first time... <laughs> they were like, what the fuck is going... Oh, because apparently <laughs> we knocked it like... We knocked a mug off of their desk. I love it. Oh, yes. that's funny. Yeah. We have kind of a cool setup because we only have one shared wall with neighbors, and it's like the kitchen backsplash wall, so it doesn't really matter. So we could do whatever we want whenever we want. So nice. my my bed, which you can see behind me, is pushed up against you know my the the wall to the left when you come in. Well, my roommate's room is right next to mine, and his wall is just like the opposite. So our headboards basically are like butting up against each other. So, we essentially know when the other person's having sex, and it's really, really funny. Uh, you all need to have, like, a fuck-off and see who can, like, <laughs> hit be the, the loudest. <laughs> who can hit the headboard the loudest. I want to see if you all can, like, break through the wall. <laughs> it's definitely me, because I'm a rough top. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Wait, I guess I'll find out if I ever come homo? to Florida. Yeah, so Here's I have street. one str- one straight roommate, one gay roommate. But the gay roommate is the one whose headboard's basically up against mine. Yeah. It's because the straight roommate is like, oh, I'm not listening to gay sex. Yeah, yeah the straight but... roommate lives across the apartment in the master bedroom, which is past the uh, kitchen and living room, so. He's separated from the gayness. <laughs> yeah, he's completely separated from the gayness. Oh, man. I embrace the gayness. I know, and yep, it's great. That's... that's why my asshole's pucker is so far after Dollywood. I know. I've always said it. Gay friends, way more fun than straight friends. <laughs> oh, we yeah. have better stories. Yeah. Yeah. And we're very open. All right, so what's your number ones? Let's piss some people off. Let's All right, go. Ryan, I'll let you piss the most people off. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, this is going to piss people off. Sandblaster at Boardwalk Amusements at Daytona Beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. The one that actually is going to piss people off. Intimidate Seven Dwarfs of Mind Train. But no, I, I enjoyed it. Um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, I'm not a big fan because it's too hard to get fast passes and the line's way too long. And it's way Is it too because the dwarfs are the same size as you and it makes you uncomfortable? Yes. Hey, I'm five foot six and a half, and I'm not that short. You are smaller than one of my dog's ropes that she plays with. <laughs> So, so it's kind of funny when I hang out with Valentine because Valentine's like eight feet tall. Yep. And so I have to like crane my neck up to tell him my crazy stories. He can suck my dick without being on his knees. It's great. Damn it. I was about to say that. (laughs) I think that was a (laughs) fuck. 
Uh, well, I three hundred five is definitely respectable, and it is a uh, it's a good ride. I need a ride to make me black out like I three hundred five. I've yet to ride it, so uh, I, oh, I, it it'll get you. Oh, man, I don't know really how weird. we went on a day where there were no lines, but it was walk on, and they let us stay on. Um, oh, beautiful. Twice, so we did three total uh, rides in a row, and, and you almost died. Um, it, yeah, but at the end of the third one, it was just like, okay, it's time to get off. Even though they might have let us go on another time, three was good. Jesus. All right, Jordan, what's your uh, number one? Number one, no doubt, Fury 325. Now, I have never loved a coaster the way I fucking love Fury. I have been to Carowinds seven times since that open, and I have gotten over 140 rides in on Fury. I buy the fast lane just to marathon Fury. I, Jordan, 100% agree with you because my number one is also Fury 325. And I, again, drove about eight hours to go to ride fury 325 and i went during a um ace event i actually met up with uh, goliath during that event and i we had an hour of ert at the end of it because it was an um it was an ace event and um an hour of ert at night and i sat in the back right corner of that ride and i rode it 13 times without getting off of it mayor just marathoned it just sat in the same seat didn't move and it was euphoria like that first drop just being whipped over the top because i'm sitting in the back the over and under the entrance you're flying by man it is um so low and so fast over those entrance um and stuff and then you hit that like weird turnaround that looks like a um oh the treble cleft treble cleft turnaround yeah and um that lateral airtime moment before you dive underneath of it oh god uh uh, just, that's the sounds I was making when I was riding that ride. Let's be real. You know, and that's why, you know, I got a tattoo related to that because I know it's going to be a good coaster for a while. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Piece of shit. Ryan, it's have you just, ridden Fury 325 yet? I haven't. Um, so, so what? On the, on the radar, well, we're saving up to buy a house this year and then we have the wedding in february so right now i'm acting like a poor person and just hoarding money um for all that shit so once that's behind me then i think i'm gonna do a trip hit uh carowinds and then cedar point like fly you're probably all right all right all right Ryan. you're probably better off just hanging out and waiting until next year until they get that Mock that Slater wanted built. <laughs> that's what I, Ryan. That's what I was gonna say. Me and you can road trip to Carowinds uh, as soon as that mock is done, and yeah, you, you let me. We'll go. Let me know when oh, you do that because be I will perfect. join you all in a heartbeat. Um, but I wanted to just say really quick. I usually I love camping like a lot. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do. And so for that Carowinds trip that I went to for that Ace event, I camped at the Carowinds campground. 10 out of 10 do not recommend staying at that campground. It is garbage. Yes, I could see Fury from my tent. Yes, I could hear the lift hill announcement on Fury from my tent. When I went to sleep that night, all the lights in the campground remained on. So it was like fucking daylight when I was trying to fucking sleep. So fuck you, Carowinds Campground. You're awful. I hate you. Today, I met a gay person that likes camping. Like, I went camping once. It was a terrible Holiday Inn. I would never go back. There's nothing better than tying a hammock between two trees and using it as a sex sling. You can do that without living in a tent. Yeah, but there's something thrilling about being in the forest. Yeah, you get to play child refugee. Right, Donald? (laughs) That's how they're spinning that situation. (laughs) I propose that um, we rename Valentine to something to do with camping. Because apparently he's all about it. I do love camping. It's so much fun. We're going to call you Brokeback. RTO Brokeback. Follow his new Twitter. No, it's still RTO Valentine. 
Yeah. Let's not do that because uh, I don't want him to take too many pills like somebody. <laughs> R.I.P. Heath. <laughs> You know, what's funny is, as a gay man, I've never made it all the way through Brokeback Mountain before turning it off saying, this movie is stupid. So, yeah, I tried to watch it, too. I guess I just didn't, like, get it. But I was just like, okay, I'm bored. I'm gonna watch something else now. I watched it to the point where Anne Hathaway took her top off, and I'm like, ah, I'm good now. (sighs) Yeah, yeah, I would have been like, this is garbage. If you ever want to see something funny, they kind of, they did a Family Guy skit where it was, uh, Brokeback Mountain from the perspective of the horses. Oh, oh my god, I've definitely seen that. Yeah, yeah they're like, oh, God, what's going good. on in there? Ah, ah, run! What's happening? Just run! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was my reaction every time yeah. for the first time I opened straight porn. Yeah, let me tell you, man. After you, you never feel like more just like, God, I'm a horrible, horrible monster. And then after you're done jerking it to porn and then you just look at it and you're like, why did I like this? <laughs> what in this my mind? This is gross. What in my mind decided that incest porn was the appropriate choice? <laughs> I have Hey, issues. it's okay where he lives. Give him a break. Nice. Yeah, technically incest is just normal porn here. It's true. That's true. <laughs> Like take your pants off, cousin. Speaking of taking my pants off, I really have to piss, and we're running about an hour and a half now, so we probably should end this show. Well, like Miley, we can't stop, and we won't stop. <laughs> no, um, I'm too drunk to computer right now, so I'm trying to. Oh, there we go. You better be recording. <laughs> I am recording. <laughs> I swear to God. I say, I say we probably end the show. What about you? Yeah, we probably should. All right, all right, all right. Valentine even happy. stretches gay as fuck. What? You even stretch gay as fuck, right? That's how he prepares his asshole for you. Oh, man, I have to prepare my asshole for a little bit later because I've got to pick up my boyfriend in like an hour. Yeah. And I'm not a bottom, so it takes a lot more preparing for me. <laughs> oh, I knew he'd cave for this new hot guy. Is it Called right? It. Isn't he worth it though? Yeah. Oh, you've already done it, haven't you? I have not. I have not. Not yet. He oh, looks, today's the I day. Still say, today might be the day. I still say he looks like Ricochet, and that that made me happy. <laughs> you approve? Yeah. yeah. Just because of that, I'm like, he looks like a wrestler. I like. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna leave every bit of this in the episode. <laughs> oh yeah, this is staying in. All right, so if you want to all fight, if you want want to just tweet at us and tell us how much of a shithole we all are because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about in our top five lists, you can tweet all of us at once at RT, the number two podcast. So that's RT2 podcast on Twitter. If you think my list is the best of them all because we all know it is, you can find me at RTO Valentine. Because I was born on Valentine's Day, if you don't get the fucking joke. RTO Valentine is my Twitter account. Jordan, where can they find you? You can find me at RTO Muscle Daddy. Um, you know, if you want to talk about how Cheetah Hunt is a sack of shit, and now I'm biased against it, feel free to tweet at me. Also, if you want to talk about any straight guy shit, please do, because I'm just surrounded by people who don't care about sports. It's that lovely gif of all those hot dogs fl- flying at that like girl's face. That's literally you. I know. I'm just like, did anybody else watch the NBA draft? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> I think hockey, Luka right? Doncic's really good. Oh, I watched the hockey draft, too. The Canucks took a defenseman, which we fucking need. So anyway... Uh, Ryan, how do we find you on Twitter? You can find me at RTO Delaney, RTO D E L A N E Y. And if you want to find us in real life, let's go ahead and give our addresses. I want I haven't had a stalker for a little bit. Come on, come find me. You can call us if you uh, if we need another number to block. You can call us at 26 ride this. That's 2674338447. Um, so give us a call, give us a text, give us a voicemail. Well, if you want to shoot us an email or anything, if you want to do it that way, send us some fun shit. Email us at ridethis2 at gmail. So, 
And hey, maybe eventually we'll have a, a YouTube channel that you can actually watch our beautiful faces. Yeah. And yes, a Patreon, so. because you can pay us. I will take your money. I'm not Slater. He'll take your money and he'll take his pants off. So, we'll, oh, we'll I'll do that for Surge. <laughs> because uh, it's something that we're pretty excited about. So, after this episode, we will be live on YouTube um, for the next one. So, you'll be able to join us as we get drunk during the middle of the day. Um, more details to come on that. If you want us to drop in bombs like we're Hulk Hogan being recorded. That will not happen because we're not fucking monsters. I'm from Kentucky, so I'm a fucking monster. You are about to be a fucking monster in probably 30 minutes, aren't you? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no he's going to be getting fucked by a monster. <laughs> also true. Yeah, I could see I could see his dong in his shorts. He was backing. Good for you, Valentine. I will let you all know how that goes. If I'm, I'm just half, fine without knowing. <laughs> can, we, can we just... Put that down in our little um, journal that Muscle Daddy was checking out Valentine's boyfriend's penis. Oh, absolutely. I have to see where I stand in the pecking order of everyone. You're still number one in my heart and my whole. Thank you. After all, I played sports in high school. I've been in the locker room. I've looked. Yeah. We've all I'm- looked. I might be five, six and a half, but that doesn't mean I'm at my tallest when I'm on my feet. Oh! Ooh. Wow. He's got a kickstand. Well, it's not hard when you're that short. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just because the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train was made after me... Means you got seven things to play with. Yup. I thought it That'd meant be because kind of weird if you had seven getting fucked dicks. by seven dwarves. I definitely meant that as a seven-inch joke, but apparently it didn't come out right. Anyway, bye, y'all! Oh, we're just leaving. We probably like say that. bye too. Just yeah. abandoning. Valentine's just like bye. Show's over. Right, this two podcasts. Now this is embarrassing.